Hello and thanks for tuning in to Beware the Queue. I hope you're well. Today's video is part 4 of the All Tomorrow's Timeline. If you haven't seen parts 1, 2 and 3 yet, I would encourage you to do so. The links can be found in the description. Please remember to like the video, leave a comment and subscribe, and if you feel generous, please become a channel member, patron, or buy some merch. Now, with all that said, let's get into it. Last time we met the future humans, it was the year 42,300,000 AD. The new humans, the ones who survived, seemed to be making some decent progress. They had begun to cast off the shackles of the Q and the artificial disabilities that they had given them. They could now begin to forge their own path. Now we'll skip ahead to the year 43,500,000 AD. As is my custom now with these timeline videos, we'll go through the surviving species one by one and take a look at their progress. Around 1.2 million years have passed, and the new humans have made great strides on their journey towards full sapience. The worms have become fully arboreal, living high up in the tall trees. A worm will spend its entire lifetime never even seeing or touching the ground below, and will only make contact with the forest floor after it has expired naturally. They have developed into intelligent beings, primitive but with complex languages and their own cultures. They can be said to be at a stage equivalent to our Bronze Age. They can no longer be called worms, for now, they are the Snake People. The Predators have reached their medieval period, having developed more rapidly than the worms. There are many wars, much bloodshed, and weapons of torture on this world so horrific that they would make Vlad the Impaler blush. But this was down to their amped up killer instincts that were fine tuned by the Q all those millions of years ago. They will grow out of it in time, but for now, they are known as the Killer Folk. The Swimmers are well on their way to becoming a force to be reckoned with. They have solved the problems of communication that plagued them to begin with, and have domesticated almost all lower life forms on their ocean world. They have become the Tool Breeders. The Lizard Herders are falling further into bestiality, while the Lizards themselves have rapidly developed into intelligent beings. In fact, the humans on this world have devolved so far that they're no longer capable of maintaining their lizard worship religion that they had a million years ago. These lizard people who have inherited the planet can now be classified as Soro Sapiens. They, like the killer folk, are currently in a medieval time period. The colonials have spent the last one million years perfecting their cooperative skills. They're now joining together in groups of around 10 or 11 individuals. They too have reached their medieval period. Currently, wars are being fought between massive groups of individuals who have sided with different leaders over this issue or that. Whichever leader can gather the most modules to join him in his cause will become the larger whole. Currently, this world's largest army of modules, numbering around 23,000, who have joined together to form a titanic mass around half a mile in height and a mile in length and width, is the undisputed leader of the land. Every individual of this mass, all of whom share the same ideology, is able to act in perfect unison with the others to achieve the aims of what they feel is the greater good. Betrayal or Machiavellian scheming are impossible. The other modulars are so in tune with each other that even a hint of insurrection would be spotted a mile off. While this army is currently on top, others will rise up on opposing sides to eventually take the crown for themselves. They can now be comfortably called the Modular People. The Flyers, being effectively large human birds, have always been fully mobile and able to make their way across their world with relative ease. As such, the concepts of nations, countries and borders never really emerged. They could of course be territorial, but the Flyers would often fly from one continent to another and then back again, setting up homes along the way. 
because they didn't have the problems of other human species, such as wars and invasions over the course of their history due to territorial disputes, they were able to skip over all that and get to grips with the big questions, the ones that the other new humans wouldn't reach for tens of thousands of years. While globalism is rarely a good idea, for the Flyers it came about naturally and suited them well. It was all they'd ever known. And now they were building great cities in the sky. They're no longer just Flyers, they're now the Terro Sapiens. The Parasites have established themselves quite well, filling many niches. Some have remained bestial, but one branch of this family had regained full sapience. They now have numerous societies across their planet and have fully domesticated the larger, mindless humans left by the queue and now use them as fully controlled modes of transport. They, like several of the other new human species, are living through their late medieval period. Things will only get better from here. They have become the symbiotes. The fingerfishers have taken something of a turn. They're much more violent than they were before, owing to the declining number of fish available to them. They had to toughen up and only the toughest survived. They're quite different physically too. If the fish wouldn't come to them, then they would have to hunt the fish. Over the 1.2 million years or so that have passed, they have developed sails that spread from their torso to the tips of their fingers and now have two long tongues which act as their hands. They use their wings to glide across water bodies and their tongues to snatch up the fish. They are now the sail people. The hedonists have certainly made the most of their existence. While the Terrasapiens have reached a level of philosophical enlightenment unparalleled by anyone else in the galaxy, the Satyriacs have mastered the culinary arts as well as many other decadent pursuits. Theirs is a late medieval period in terms of tech, but one where nobody starves and everyone enjoys themselves heartily on a daily basis. They've truly gotten it right when it comes to living life, but life can always be better. They are now the Satyriacs. The insect guy seem to have raced ahead of the other new humans. They could be said to be almost on par with the star people when they began to colonise the solar system. It's quite amazing how far they've come from eating insects to being a fully sapient, intelligent, spacefaring species in such a short time. However, within this optimistic, highly advanced species was a certain naivety. They broadcast signals all over the galaxy and eventually came into contact with an alien species. Nothing is known about these aliens, but their invasion of the insect guy's world would leave a deep imprint upon these new humans and cause them to now be forever fearful of another alien invasion. They have become the bug facers. The spacers have drifted yet further from their initial concern of the other new humans. In fact, they have ceased to even consider themselves a part of the new human family. They're gods. They are now the Asteromorphs. The Ruin Haunters have, by this point, more or less grown out of their initial madness that was characteristic of their early development. After several world wars and various other disasters, the majority of them seem to have gotten their heads on straight. The rulers of the Ruin Haunters world, however, are still somewhat insane. They still call themselves the Wise Men. They have now reached a level of technological understanding comparable to that of the Star People, circa 5000 AD, just before they encountered the Q. They do not, however, have the same level of enlightenment as the Star People had. They have held on to their bizarre ideas of the other new human species being evil and demonic. The Haunters still haven't had any contact from them, as they are thousands of years behind when it comes to technology, but if such a communication ever should come through, it will be coldly ignored. Their planet's temperature is starting to become noticeably higher. For now, things are bearable, but sooner or later a solution to this problem will have to be formulated. 45 million AD 
Life continued on for these new human species and they eventually reached their final optimal forms, as briefly mentioned before. A profile of each one follows. The snake people are the first of the future human species to regain their sapience and are the evolved forms of the worms. They listen to vibrational ground music, they read and enjoy lives very much like our own today. Their social development followed a similar path to ours, including industrial revolutions, social experiments, civil wars and world wars, eventually reaching the point of globalization. The killer folk are perhaps the most violent of all the future humans, and are the evolved descendants of the predators. All of their religions allow for periods of ritualistic killings and sacrifices, even into their more civilized era. Eventually, these practices would be done away with, following a perilously close near-miss with a world war, which would have been fought between those who wished to continue their killing ways, and those who wished to move on from them. Descendants of the swimmers, the tall breeders became intelligent, aquatic future humans, whose technology would be based around genetic manipulation and utilization of other sea-based lifeforms. They became masters of genetic engineering, rivaling the Q in this field, and would eventually look to the stars and begin colonizing new, far-off ocean planets. The Saurosapients are hyper-evolved and intelligent reptiles, descended from the lizard herders' pets. Theirs truly is a case of a world being turned upside down, as the lizards would evolve to become the intelligent, dominant species, while the lizard herders themselves would further devolve into an animalistic state, thanks to Q intervention which would stunt their brain's development. The evolved form of the Colonials, the modular people are made up of several living beings, which can be changed at will, echoing their past as separate beings forced to live their lives stitched to one another. Descended from the Flyers, the Terrasapiens are a race of flying future humans. Theirs is a highly intelligent civilization, boasting some of the greatest philosophers the galaxy had ever seen. Their lifespan, however, is extremely short, owing to their artificially designed hearts, which makes their species prone to severe heart conditions. The symbiotes are descended from the parasites and their hosts. They now have a beneficial coexistence, with the parasites being the brains and the hosts being the brawn. The parasites would have a body for work, a body for leisurely pursuits, and likely other hosts used for a variety of other activities. The sail people are the descendants of the finger fishers, whose fingers had long since evolved into sails which would be used to propel them across the surfaces of water bodies. They, like the killer folk, are violent and bloodthirsty in their early development, but eventually they grow out of it and learn to live in peace. The Satyriacs are a race whose existence is all about pleasure, much like their ancestors, the Hedonists. The Bug Faces are the descendants of the Insect Ophigai. As a race, they are deeply paranoid, due to an unknown alien invasion taking place in their past, as previously mentioned. The Astromorphs are the descendants of the Spacers. They successfully evaded the Q, and continue to live out their lives within hollowed out asteroids, building highly advanced societies unimaginable to us 21st century humans. They were godlike beings, but would become even greater still. Around 4,000 years ago, the Ruin Haunter's planet's sun had expanded to a degree that made organic life almost impossible on their world. They eventually found a way to upload their minds into machine bodies using quantum computing technology, thus allowing them to continue to live on their scorching planet. Why they chose to do this, rather than colonize a new world, is unknown. Perhaps they felt that this world was the one given to them by their gods, the Star People, and so here they must remain. Despite their machine bodies, they still retained human minds and emotions. They are arguably just as advanced, if not more so, than the Astromorphs. They still hold on to the belief that the other new humans are demons and don't deserve to exist. These ideas will reach deadly new heights in the coming age, the Age 
of the machines. They are the Gravital. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and become a member or patron. This has been Beware the Q, and I'll see you in part 5 of the All Tomorrow's Timeline. Take care.